look around you attentively. What you see is not what is there. Your sensorial uh, apparatus is being targeted by lots of different signals from the environment. And everything is conspiring to creating a definite, sharp image of this room. The light, the color, position of chairs, number of people, they all have a definite value, all of these properties. And yet, we know from physics that this is not what is really there. All the particles in this room, those that compose your bodies, uh, the photons in the light, and various other things, things that make sound propagate, phonons, etc., are all quantum mechanical particles. And that means that most of their properties are not sharp, are not definite. Quantum mechanical particles exist in states where if you wanted to measure some of the properties of these particles, most of the times you would get an answer of which you can only predict the probability, but is uncertain, is indefinite. And for this property, I will use the word unsharpness. This is unsharpness of quantum systems. And this is what actually gives the appearance at the macro scale of these definite features that we all can see. So let's take a look. Classically, what we know is that objects have definite properties. So for example, if you want to describe a neutron, um, you can, for instance, say that a neutron is in a particular position, zero, um, or it's in a different position, one. These two positions are distinguishable. You can also assign an energy to the neutron and lots of other properties, spin, etc., and they're all definite. Um, quantum mechanically, picture is completely different. Um, there is a state where the neutron is in position zero, there's a state where the neutron is in position one, but also there is this particular state here, which I represent pictorially like that, where we can only predict the probability for the neutron to be in position zero or one, but the position is unsharp. And these states are called superpositions. And notice that this unsharpness has nothing to do, or has very little to do, with stochastic uncertainty, like when you throw a dice. This is a different type of unsharpness, is richer. And this is why it's the key property that powers all of quantum mechanics features, including those that are used for quantum computers, for quantum cryptography, and for, pro for properties like entanglement that are extremely exotic and different from what we perceive. Now, this unsharpness is mind-boggling. It's a very beautiful feature of these quantum systems, um, but is also a source of very interesting problems. And one of the most interesting problems comes up when we try to ascribe this unsharpness to objects which are demanded by other physical theories to be sharp all the time. And this is the case of gravity. Now, general relativity is this theory that Einstein came up with to describe masses and the way they interact through gravitational forces. And relativity, um, theory of gravity in general, have no unsharpness. They want their objects to be all the time sharp in their position, their energy, all of their features. So when you want to describe, for instance, the interaction between two masses, like this, um, you can only describe this if you can assume that these masses are fixed and have definite positions, and then they interact with respect to one another through gravitational interactions. General relativity can't take the unsharpness of quantum theory. So, for example, what happens if instead of two sharp masses in sharp positions, you have masses that are 
in quantum superpositions of different locations. So um, quantum theory requires every object to be capable of being in these superpositions. So we have to consider these states if we believe in quantum theory. But at the same time, if we believe that these are masses and that they can gravitate, they should also obey general relativity. But general relativity doesn't allow these type of states. It can't deal with this. So there's a big question mark there. And physicists are scratching their heads about this. What is going on? How do we describe this? Now, this, of course, didn't, didn't go unnoticed in the early days of, of, of when pioneers of these two theories were, were discovering the, the properties of, of those two beautiful descriptions of reality. And that led to a very nice conference that took place in North Carolina, the Chapel Hill Conference. And that led to science friction. <laughs> it was a very, very interesting debate taking place there because there were two camps. Um, one led by Richard Feynman, who was there, then a very young, uh, bright scientist uh, trying to understand what was going on there. So that camp was convinced that quantum theory is a universal theory, so it should apply to masses, and therefore masses and their gravitational interaction should obey quantum theory, and therefore they should be capable of being in these unsharp states. So Feynman was campaigning for having a quantum theory of gravity. But there was also another camp. There was a camp of other people who um, said, well, it could be that quantum theory, after all, is false at some point, that there is a scale about which it doesn't apply. Therefore, it could be that gravity is classical, and, and this unsharpness leaves gravity untouched. And this um, clash exists to this day. We haven't moved much forward since then. Well, let me explain why. And this uncovers a very nice gap in our current understanding of the physical world. A fascinating gap. Feynman's problem, um, as he put it, was exactly this. We have, we have means to create superpositions, quantum superpositions of masses, possibility of putting them in this unsharp state in regard to position. Now, this mass should do something to the gravitational field, as we say, which is this thing that um, allows gravitational interactions to occur. And if quantum theory applies, gravitational field should also respond to this unsharpness and be kind of dragged into the, this quantum state that the mass is already in and join it into a larger quantum state. Now, people said, yeah, that's, that's, that sounds like a good idea. Let's try to come up with proposals for what we call quantum gravity. And there are some very beautiful um, proposals that try to describe what's going on in this case. But they're all problematic. And the deepest of their problems is that whenever they make a prediction about the features of this joint state, those predictions turn out to be unaccessible experimentally. So the features of this state can be accessed to experiments at the moment. Our technologies are not good enough. And in fact, um, there are theories that predict that gravity should produce the analog of photons, which are called gravitons, quanta of energy of the gravitational field. And turns out that those theories that say that gravitons exist, they also say that gravitons can't be detected. It takes too long a time for a graviton to be emitted. We wouldn't be able to see any. So how do we test whether those theories of quantum gravity are um, right or not? For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.